Lipton Estate was owned by the Tresham family, who were of Norman descent, and they had their ancestral seat in Rushton, Northamptonshire. It seems from history that the Tresham family always chose the losing side of the seven men who were heads of the family between 1399 and 1605 one was definitely murdered one was definitely executed a further three were probably murdered and one died young at the age of only 23 only Sir John Tresham seems to have avoided an unpleasant end and it, it appears that even he lost some of his property to his brother-in-law. The house was probably built as a garden lodge, a place where Thomas could retire with a minimum of servants while maybe the principal dwelling at Rushton Hall was being cleaned, or if he would come across to Lyvedon to uh, do some hunting in the nearby Rockingham Forest. The front of the building has a grand entrance the steps long gone, the house would have been a magnificent sight as you drove up from the road below in your carriage towards the house. But on the opposite side of the house things were far different. Here was the servant's entrance. You had to bow your head to enter and as you went through the back door into the servant's quarters and where the kitchens and storerooms were things were far different from the house above. The servants area was just a raised basement. As you went through the entrance lobby and into the main part of the kitchens there you would see the windows were far smaller than the ones above and you would find that here it was much darker but above were the main room where light and laughter existed. Lived a new build was never completed. Constructed by Sir Thomas Tresham, it boasted a great hall, parlour, bedroom, buttery, and a servant's kitchen, in which the bread ovens and the fireplace can still be seen. The Tresham family were fervently Catholic. His passionate Catholic beliefs are highlighted by the religious friezes and various inscriptions on the walls, which include the phrase, Gorde Mater Maria, Rejoice Mother Mary. Most inspirationally, when the sun shines through the parlour window in the morning, it casts the shadow of a crucifix on the wall behind. In 1605, after decades of religious persecution, Thomas died and the estate passed to his son, Francis. However, Francis perished in the Tower of London after becoming involved in the gunpowder plot. His wife managed the estate on behalf of his younger brother, Lewis, but as a spendthrift, Lewis squandered the family wealth and the estate was sold after his son's death. As a result, Lyvedon New Build remains exactly as it was when the builders left. In 1649, the whole Lyvedon estate was sequestered during the Civil War. As you look under the bay window, you can see where some of the soldiers used the building as target practice. In 1660, Charles II granted Lyvedon to the Earl of Sandwich, and from then the house passed through various family members. The National Trust acquired the Lyvedon estate in the early 1920s. In recent years, the remains of an enchanting Elizabethan pleasure garden with spiral mounts, terraces and moats, believed to be one of the oldest layouts in Britain, has been rediscovered. The orchard has been restored and new walks linking the house to the once popular hunting grounds of Rockingham have also been created. This feature is called Prospect Mound and this is where the Elizabethan ladies would walk up the spiral pathway to the top of the mound and from there they could have a panoramic view of the estate looking over towards the house on the right and over towards the orchard on the left and also towards the lakes 
and the labyrinth guard. In the last 20 years or so, the National Trust has done an amazing job of discovering and reinstating much of the gardens and the grounds, including the orchard, the labyrinth gardens, the, uh, the lakes, and so much more, making this a pleasurable place to visit on any day.